How's it going everyone? So today what I've got for you is a video on custom tactics which you can use to break down the five back. Now the five back is something which has definitely gained a lot more attention recently and people are struggling when it comes to how to break it down. Uh, they feel like the game's getting a bit boring uh, as a result of it. Now what I've got for you today is four different custom tactics I recommend using on how to break it down. Now a lot of people may switch to a five back when they go one go up or you know two goes up something like that. Or in tight games now that's when it's the most effective I feel but a lot of people just use it anyway because it is a very good formation um, but like I said today I've got four different custom tactics and the first one I'm gonna get show you is a 4-4-2 now I'd put press after possession loss on now what this does is say, as soon as you lose the ball your players are up the pitch uh, pressing that's why you have a higher depth because you don't want them too far back uh, you want your players to be aggressive and winning the ball back high and try and pin your opponent in now with the 5-3-2 uh, 532 for example 5212 there's not too much width now obviously you have your wing backs but apart from that there's no real outlet to like a winger um, so they can ping it to they're, they're on their own so if you have your players high up the pitch and pressing uh, they'll struggle to really get out you kind of trap them in uh, which is why I have the seven depth you could do eight again preference but personally with a 442 I'd go seven depth I don't know eight depth just feels a little bit too high for me um, and then what I'd also have for your offensive is a long ball. Now this is just because, like I said, you want to attack them areas. Uh, say, you, so, say your opponent's got up the pitch and is making moves in your box or around your box and their wing backs are pushed up. With having long ball on, it'll make sure your players, as soon as you win the ball back, start making runs in behind or you can trigger them anyway. Uh, you want to try and counter attack them spaces as quick as possible. So long ball is probably the best way to do it really. Um, why I have, again, like he'll usually say, I don't play about with width too much, um, but I put players in the box on this on three because what I want is my two strikers and even my wide uh, player or one of my centre mids getting into the box to support me, um, mainly because there'll be the three centre halves there, so you kind of need to make a bit of chaos. Corners and free kicks are all preference. Uh, now, when it comes to instructions, what I'd have is I'd have both your fullbacks on joining the attack. Now, why is this? Like I was saying, you need to use the wings pretty pretty well because that's where you're going to get your overloads. That's where you're going to get your 2v1 sort of things. Um, so I'd highly recommend having your fullbacks on joining the attack. Like I said, this is very aggressive. I wouldn't use this if it was a nil-nil or you're up by 1-0 against a five-back. This is something I'd use if you're a goal down, for example. Um, so I'd have join the attack on both of your fullbacks. Like I said, you want to get them up involved in the attacks. Uh, and then with your left mid I'd, and right mid, I'd put comeback, get into the box. Now this is just because, again, you want you do want support um, while defending in this if you don't win it back after the initial uh, press. So by having comeback on, it just makes things a little bit tighter at the back. And with the uh, support of the wing backs joining the attack, often you lose your runners. So by having uh, by having your wingers on comeback, they'll just help with tracking that and closing the space on the wide areas. And the two centre mids now, the right one, I'm not sure why three runs on, uh, but on the right one I'd have a stay back, uh, stay on edge, cover centre, and that, mainly that is good. You don't want, this is your more defensive one, you don't want him joining the attack. You just want him sitting there and I put on stay on edge because you don't want him making any runs into the box at all. And then your left centre mid, I have it on balanced attack cover center and stone edge again the reason i put it on stone edge for this one though is mainly because i want him to be on the edge in case the ball falls out to me i don't want him necessarily attacking the box like i said i mainly want that to be my opposite winger but your left center mid will still make runs into the box when needed now your two strikers you just want to stay central stay forward you don't want them dropping in to support uh, your defense you want them to be up there so they can be outlets to make runs in behind as soon as you regain possession and like I said, you want them to stay central. You don't really want them drifting wide. That's where your wingers and your fullbacks are going to be attacking the space. Now, the next one uh, I'm going to show you is the 4 3 3 4. Now, this is something I've tried a little bit and it has worked. It has definitely worked. Um, so, this one's a bit more complicated, mainly because you need to really counter attack down these wings. The wings are going to be where you find the most success in this formation. Now, with the defensive styles, I just keep it on balance this time. I don't want to be going too aggressive because there are quite a bit of space, which we'll get into in just a sec with the formation. Um, but sixth death again, I don't like it too low against the five back. I want, to be, it, I want it to be pretty high. And then long ball for the exact same reasons as last time, but we're going to be wanting to attack down and wings, like I said. 
We put the corners on and free kicks on 2-2, two, two, like I say, preference. Now, if you look at this formation, there's a lot of spaces, especially between that left centre mid and left back and the right centre mid, right back. You know, it, it just looks like there's a lot of space on the pitch. So that's why I keep it on balanced, if I'm honest. I don't want, I don't want my players uh, being dragged way out of position by pressing after possession loss. Um, I just want it to be nice and nice and calm and relaxed, to be honest. I don't want it too chaotic. Um, because, like I said, you're going to be wanting to counter-attack a lot down the wings in this formation. But uh, we put it on stay back on both the fullbacks In this formation, you don't really want them joining too much because you've got wingers, not you know wide midfielders. You've actually got like attacking players there, or more attacking-minded roles there even. Now, when it comes to the right centre mid, again, I put stay back cover centre. I don't want my right centre mid joining the attack. I want him to just be there sort of like the anchor, the backbone of the team. However, the left centre mid, I keep it on balanced everything apart from I put cover centre on. Again, I don't want him drifting too wide to defend. I want him uh, to be you know, pretty central. He will help support the wings if needed. Um, but again, cover centre mainly, mainly just to deal with the, uh, say it's against a 5-3-2, to deal with all the players narrow um, in that formation. I want him to be able to support the central players. And then the cam, I keep it on literally default everything apart from getting to the box. If you really want, you could put comeback on. If you really want to counter-attack, like, nothing but. But you'll be exposed a little bit more on defence. Put stay forward on. Now, the re now this is also the reason why I put cover centre on. Because I tend to find my uh, cam in this sort of formation drops into, like, the left left side roll. And my cent and my left centre mid will become the central centre mid. Um, or, well, that's just how, I've, how, I, um, how it happens to me anyway. So that will sort of cover the wing and the central positions by doing that. And it sort of matches them up in the middle of the pitch. Uh, with a, Say it's a 5-3-2, you match them up there. Say it's a 5-2-1-2, you match them up there with the bodies in the middle of the park. Now where it really gets... Uh, these, these wingers are probably the most important spots of the team. You want them to be on stay forward, stay wide, get into the box. Again, like I said, in the five-back formations, you'll often find your opponents using the wing backs to get up the pitch and attack the spaces. So by having it on stay forward, stay wide, they'll be occupying that space that wing back uh, operates in. So say they're up the pitch and they lose the ball, you can attack down that wing as soon as possible or as quick as possible. And then you've also got your striker and your winger there to support you and even your cam to make the runs forward. Um, so yeah, this is something I definitely put on. Uh, this formation is very good when it comes to counting the five back. And yeah, and when it comes to the striker, I put stay central, stay forward. Again, I don't want them drifting wide. That's where the wingers are. I want them to just be there. Like This is, in my case, Ronaldo. So I want him to be central. I want him to be able to hold up the ball, but also uh, not help me on defense. I want him to, like I said, hold up the ball, play it to the wingers and exploit the space. And now another one. This one's a bit more aggressive or very aggressive. This is if you want something which can completely counter it, but you're also very aggressive with the press. You put press officer uh, possession loss on, you put on eight depth, you, you're literally going for it at this point. You're having your players a lot higher. I'd recommend maybe if you're two, three goals down and you're really struggling going to this. Uh, put on balanced, uh, you'll see why in a sec. Because when it comes to formation, it's the three, uh, three, four, one, two. Now, you could go three, five, two, but in my opinion, this three, four, one, two is better than the three, five, two. The three, five, two, it often finds, I often find my CDMs. Playing in like cam roles almost, and then the, instead of being a defensive mid, it's weird. So I put it on the three four one two. It, I think it's a lot more balanced. The two the two centre mids act as CDMs, but also offensively they're a lot higher, so they can help with uh, press the press after possession loss. Um, and when it comes to in, uh, the instructions, I just put my two wingers on comeback, get into the box. Again, you, you do want them to support you on defence because especially when it comes to the wing backs in them wide areas, you want them to be there, like I said, to help support you and make sure there's no spaces down the wing um, for them to operate in. Now your two centre mids, I just put stay back cover centre on. I don't want them to, I don't want them to really have any uh, difficulties, you know, or I don't really want to be counter attacked that quick. So at least then I have I do have five still back helping me if I do get counter attacked and the wingers are up the pitch. So I can I can defend the counter attacks, but also with the press half possession loss, that just means they're a bit more in position. Sometimes they will filter up the pitch naturally to support attacks, but like I said, they won't be bombing on too much. Now with your cam, you just want to stay forward, get into the box. You don't want him coming back, supporting him. Like I said, otherwise he'll be pushed out to that left hand side. And in this formation, you don't really want that. You've already got a four in midfield. Um, you've got a nice structure there anyway. So then with the two strikers, I'd have stay central, stay forward again. 
you don't want them you don't want them drifting wide you've got the wingers to operate in them areas you want them nice and centrally to uh make a bit of chaos them to uh, all the three center backs they'll be facing the final one i've got is something i could sort of use when it come when it came to my dynamic custom tactics uh that's a video i uploaded a few days ago make sure you check that out a uh, link to that will be in the description if you want a bit more detail on this sort of formation um now it's the free uh four three one two even now i put press up position loss i want my team nice and high up the pitch i want to be able to win the ball back quickly in this formation um you might get counter attacked it's more likely than not but when playing against a five back their wing backs will be pinned in so it'll be a lot harder for them to get out you put the width on two again you're playing narrow you want the wing uh, the full backs in this case even to be the ones getting up the pitch and supporting them wide areas so put by putting it narrow it sort of means that everyone else is condensed in and then full backs have space to operate in players in the box um i put on i put on six now this is because i want my two strikes and cam attacking the box corners and free kicks like i always say preference and when it comes to instructions what i do is i put balance attack on both my full backs and overlap again by putting overlap that just means they stick out wide they, they don't really ever make inverted runs they'll just stay on them wing or stay on the wings and always be overlapping them wide center mid regardless of where they're positioned uh, so the central center mid and the left center mid i put on balanced attack cover center these are the two i just want to be central um I still want them to be supporting the attack, especially when it comes to the press after possession loss. Because if my opponent's just sat back, uh, you know, controlling one player or something, if I lose the ball, I want to be right there in their face, ready to press. And the right centre mid, I put on get forward, uh, cover wing. The cover wing thing is mainly because I don't want three centre mids all be on cover centre. I want one of them to be supporting the wings. Um, so say say my left centre mid ends up drifting up wide anyway to cover the wing. My right centre mid will then uh, drop in and cover centre with my central centre mid. And when it comes to my cam, I stay forward, get into the box. I want them to be up there. Like I said, I don't want them coming back supporting. I want them up there getting into the box constantly. I never want them really coming back on uh, defence. And then my two strikes, I put on stay central, stay forward again. Don't want them operating in wide areas because that's where the full backs will be going. Um, I want to be central and try and break the lines or break the wall almost off all their centre backs now. Like I said, I know a lot of people have been struggling with a five back um, and playing against it. So hopefully this helps you out. If it does, make sure you let me know in the comments below. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it helps you. If it did, leave a like, uh, comment any videos or any issues you're having post-patch. Subscribe if you are new and I'll catch you boys hopefully in a few days with another video.